Good evening, everybody. Welcome, Study Guide with Joe. Today, I'm coming to you at my beautiful home. And today, I'm going to talk to you about I Need to Change My Life. That is my title. And it's so powerful to understand what we need in this world now than what happened 2,000 years ago about changing our lives. And now, if we could, let's jump into the to the Bible, to the testimony of the scripture of the gospel. If we could go to Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, and it reads like this. I preach you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsible servant. And do not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the rewinding of your mind, that you may prevent what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, Paul is pleading with the people. He says, listen, we cannot consume the behavior on earth. We cannot consume into, into different areas. Like, uh, I'm going to tell you like this. Number one, behavior meaning falling into temptation, falling of desires, falling of discomfort, this un unbelievable life on earth. Because Jesus Christ had died for us, for our sin. So he changed the whole landscape of of changing and this is the biggest thing ever in today's lives in today's society people complain about their life but they have a chance to change it through the scripture like paul says listen christ changed everybody he taught everybody so i'm teaching you is change the way we think change the way we speak change the way we hear change the way we look change the way we think and that's the most important thing. We have to change ourselves to have a better understanding. And, and there's two things about it like this. Maybe 50% of the time a woman would eat her comfort is her food. Her food is comfort because nobody don't want her. Nobody don't love her. She has a failed marriage. And she don't know what how to deal with the situation that's in front of her. Ladies. Jesus Christ loves you no matter what. Don't fall yourself into to a depression of somebody that doesn't love you. And then the second hand, you have men. Men that is addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, addicted to everything that you can can you imagine. Men drink 99.1%. Men would drink because they're high and they, they hurt, they're painful, they anger, their attitude. The way they think, the way they speak, if they complain about their marriage, they complain about their job. And so the alcohol consumed them about the way they feel. Guys, you don't have to be addicted to alcohol to lash out and talk to somebody about your feelings. It's the same thing as a woman. Don't consume with food and, and feel like nobody can listen to you. I'm here to teach you this gospel, saying, listen, you have people to talk to. It's the right people you have to talk to. And right now, like I'm doing right now, like the book of Samuel, chapter 17, verse, first Samuel, chapter 17, verse 37. And, and it reads, when I get there, you will be amazed. And this is what well, um, David said. He says, God deliver me. It goes like that, verse 37. And this is what David says. Moreover, David says, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistines. See, David, I mean David, not Paul, David. David said, listen, God rescued me from.
from 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 the lion and from the bears and from the enemy. He delivered me. And that's three things that David did. One, he listened to God and God told him he had to change his ways. Two, he meditated on changing his ways. And the third, he embraced the change. So we today we have to embrace the change when it says in the scripture, we need to embrace the change. Because if we don't change, how can God help us to change ourselves when we can't do it for ourselves. So you see how Paul said it. He said, you know, we can't assume the behavior that goes on today, but we need to be transformed inside out of change. As as David said, God will, res will rescue you if you get a chance to listen to the word. And I'm going to go back to Romans, Romans 8.29. And, and it goes like this. I mean, Romans 8.29. And it goes like this. And this, is what, and this is what Paul is saying. Verse 29. For whom he foreknow, he also petitioned to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, meaning five things. Listen to the word, believe in the word, confess in Christ, repent, and get baptized. And once we get baptized, guess what? We become transformed. Not confirmed, but transformed. Because confirm is you going with the the, the behavior, the, the, the sin behavior. But if you transform through Christ, it's a powerful, powerful change in your life. And I'm saying, if you have a Bible, pick it up, open up the scripture, read any scripture. It gives you comfort and understanding and the belief of this word. Because this is the most exciting thing that everybody should know. I like in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Paul says like this, you could meditate me like I am doing to Christ. And I'm going to go right there. First Corinthians chapter 11, first one. And you have to embrace the change. And this will Paul that he embrace the change. Now, verse 11 and first one says like this. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. I'm teaching you the gospel. So it's okay. You can act like me. Think like me and, and preach the gospel because I'm imitating Christ of the word in the commandment to have everything to go through. You know, every day you see everybody, they don't care about themselves because they too observe with themselves. They don't like they don't like to open up to people. They keep everything inside with pain, suffering, anger, anxiety. We have to take a stand and say, listen, enough is enough. You're destroying yourself. Jesus didn't die for us for you guys to destroy yourself. He died for us for our sin, for we could be transformed through him as his newborn kids of the understanding of the scripture. In, the world. in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, Paul still writes, and you know, in Colossians with a G. Colossians chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, says, My little children, from whom I labor in birth again, until Christ is formed in you. Meaning, ladies, this is for the lady, listen. You are going to be carrying a child. It could be the next Christ, the oh, of a, a beautiful, innocent child. And we, you guys are going to go to labor pains, like Genesis chapter 3, 16, when Eve had to go to labor pains because they refused to transform their life because they listened to the serpent. You know, the serpent told Eve, eat from the food tree. And what God says, you're going to go through labor pains. And guys the same way. But you see how Paul says, he said, listen, you're going to go through labor pains. Until Jesus Christ comes back to earth and transform you again. And, but Jesus had to be fulfilled 
of his scriptures, of his word, to have the understanding, to go through it. Moses wrote it back in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 10. Everything you own, you'd be blessed if you keep his commandments. And I'm going to take you there because this is what we need to do. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 10. And this is the stuff that we need to understand. We need to obey the commandments and follow the commandments to have to understand the commandments. Because if we don't do this commandments, guess what? We lose out because we want to be selfish. We, we, we want to act ridiculous. We want to get addicted to alcohol. We want to, because there's nobody there for us. But I'm telling you this, Christ is here for you. I'm here for you because I have the, the spirit of Christ. Two years ago, I got baptized. When I was younger, when I was a kid, I was in and out of church because I felt the same way you guys felt. There's nobody there to love us. There's nobody to assume us. There's nobody to care about us. But when I went to the, when I went back to church, I felt much better. The weight was lifted off my shoulders because I knew that I wanted to become a preacher to teach the gospel of God's words. This word is a beautiful word. He just wants you to change your life and change your thinking, change your hearing, change your look, your seeing, change your words. And if you change your thinking, guess what? Christ's going to work with you inside. He wants to transform you from inside out. In the next couple of weeks, I'm doing a four-part series about need to change my life. And this is the first part of it. Now, the second part comes next Thursday, a new time, next Thursday at 9 p.m. Now, now, do remind me chapter 28, verse 1 through 10, and it reads like this. Now, it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to obey carefully, careful, all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will send you high above all nations of the earth, and all those blessed shall come up on you and overtake your, you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and produce of your ground. And the increase of your hands and the increase of your cattle and the offerings of your flocks, flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your canine's bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in the blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord you cause your enemy who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouse in all to which you set your hands and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will accomplish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way, then all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. See, you see, you see what Moses says? Moses says, if you obey God's commandments, he will bless you for the rest of your life, from your household to your business, to your kids, to your marriage, to your great career, everything you wanted, he will bless it to you. The only thing we have to do is change ourselves and keep the commandments of God's commandment, his 10 commandments, or obey his commandments. But if you slack off, and don't obey his commandments, guess what? You're not going to get no blessing. You're going to suffer everything because you didn't do what you need to do.
It was to obey his commandment. Don't disobey his commandment because if you disobey his commandment, guess what? You're not going to go nowhere. You're going to be stuck in the same situation. You're going to be hating yourself in this situation. You're going to start drinking, start eating for comfort because you refuse to change yourself. But if we come together and help each other, we can change each other through the word of God and keep his commandments. And that will be a absolutely perfect way to think straight. Now, Mark chapter 10, verse 21, 22. Mark talks about this. Mark says it in Mark 10. Mark 10, verse 21 and 22. And he says like that, this is Jesus talking. And this way he said how, how we should change ourselves. And this way he says, then Jesus looked at him, love him, and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at the world and went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. See, Jesus says, that's a man what you have. If you give up all your hurt, your anger, your frustration, if you give it all up, guess what? You will have riches in heaven with him. Meaning you go up to heaven with him with love, respect, honor, blessing, mercy, and grace. And that's why you want to work for first. You want to work for grace, and then you get the mercy, and then you get the blessing. Because you obey God's commandments. And, and, you know, if you take that, you have to remember Luke chapter 22, verse 61, 62, when Jesus told Peter, you're going you, you gonna to deny, the cross going to call three times, and you still don't know me because you do not know who I am. And this is the stuff, and goes like this. And I'm going to go like this. And in Luke, in the book of Luke, and, he, and Jesus talks about Peter because Peter didn't want to change his ways. Peter didn't want to listen to Jesus. He he assumed, but I'm sorry to say, Jesus broke, Jesus cut him down. He said, listen, you don't know me. I'm trying to teach something positive for you to change your mind, and you still haven't decided. So Luke chapter 22, verse 61 and 62. It says, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Actually, I'm going to go up to 59. Then after about an hour had passed, other confidence offered and saying, surely this follows also was with him, for he is a a collision. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter ran out and wept badly. See, Jesus is telling Peter, listen, you don't know me. You're not going to recognize me. You're not going to do nothing for me because I'm teaching I'm teaching how you can change your life. I want to transform your life from the inside out. But you, you don't know what I'm teaching. I'm be teaching and you still don't get the answer I'm giving you. Look at David. David said, God rescue me. Look at what Paul says in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. He still says, I'm pleading with you. Don't have the attitude of behavior of sin. Have the behavior of Christ. And look at and let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25 to 34. Because this will, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you four pointers. 
why they why um David was focused. I'm gonna show you why they, David was focused. Twenty-five through thirty-four, and it says like this: So the man of Israel says, "Have you sent this man who ha has come up?" Surely he said, "Come up to defeat Israel, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will, Richard, with a great rich, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house." an expansion from tax in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, what shall be done for the man who kills the Philistines and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is the uncircumcised Philistine that he should defeat the army of the living God, the armor of the living God? And the people answered him, and the man is saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eba, his brother, oldest brother, had went and spoke to the man. And Eba's anger was assured against David. And he said, Why do you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insult of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards other and said to the same thing. And those people answered him as the first one did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard that reported them to Saul, and he said for him. Then David said to Saul, Let no man heart fail because of him, your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a young, he a man of war uh, from his youth. They, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock. Powerful, and let me give you three things. Number one, David would focus on the riches. Number two, he fought because he knew that his father don't have to pay no taxes at all. And the third thing that David did, this is the according that David said, you know, God rescue me from the lions and bears. I could fight Goliath. I could beat Goliath because he showed faith in God. He showed faith. And he said, God changed me around. Yeah, I'm a young man. Yeah, I don't got no experience in the army, but I know how to defeat a giant with God's help. See, what I'm telling you is, this is the stuff that we need to understand, that if we change, if we let God in our life and let him transform us, we will have a better understanding and a better love through Christ. And this is the way we should do, and this is why we should live. I'm not telling you how to live your life. It's up to you. It's totally up to you. But if you look at Paul and you look at David, you see what David said? David did three things. He listened to God to change his life. He meditated on changing his life, and he embraced his life. He embraced the change. And then he was focused on the riches, focused that if he beat the, the um, Goliath, he could get the king's daughter, and his father don't have to pay taxes because he was looking for the reward. I'm telling you, you have to look at the reward what God will put in front of you. The only thing he wants you to do is to change your life. Now, in Proverbs chapter 13, 20, and, I, and this is, and I'm going to show you. And it says like this. If you walk with a wise man, 
chapter 13, verse 20. If you walk with a wise man, you'll be wise. If you walk with a foolish man, you're going to be foolish. Chapter 13, verse 20. And it goes like this. He who walks with a wise man will be wise. But the competition of a fool will be destroyed. You see, and I'm going one more. I'm going to go one more before I sign off. Now, you see, you see what Solomon said? He said, if you walk with a wise man, you will be wise. But if you walk with a foolish man, you'll be foolish and you'll be, you're going to destroy yourself because you're not changing your ways. You're being selfish. You're closed up like a cage, like you're in a box. Jesus, in Paul, and you remember, if you go back to Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, Paul says, listen, I mean, David says, listen, you need to change yourself, change yourself. We all need to change ourselves. We need to change the way we think, the way we speak, the way we hear, and the way we see. And I like this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 through 16, it goes like that. And this is what Paul was writing. He said, for what man knows the things of a man? Expect the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God expectation. The spirit of God, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Those things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Spirit teaches in compassion of spiritual things with spiritual. But the nature of man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish. To him, near can he know them because they are spiritually disconnected. But he who is in the spirit judge all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Man. That is powerful. This is powerful stuff. This is a powerful stuff. This is a, a powerful statement. You see what it says? A man or female that doesn't go to church or doesn't want nobody to help them with their personal issues, their spirit is disconnected with God. You go back to Genesis, what happened with Adam and Eve? In the food tree, what happened? They killed their spiritual connection with God. And then that's when all the sin came. But a man that had connection with God is teaching us about we need to change ourselves. I like it in, in the scripture. I believe it's in, in 1 Corinthians or no, 2 Corinthians when he says we have to examine ourselves for who we are. But we have to understand the scripture is a beautiful scripture. I'm here to say, listen, we need to change our lives around. We need to think clearly. Like Romans 12, we have to rewind our mind and think like Christ, have a mind of Christ. That way, when Christ have our connections to the spiritual world, we do we got our physical world, we're going to fall into temptation because we don't want to, we refuse to change ourselves. But now I'm telling you is we have to change ourselves. We have to, no matter what it may be. So this is Joe. Join us next week on the second part of I Need to Change My Life. God bless, God speak, and be healthy. If you love it, press like, and God bless.